All right, what are two add-ins you can use that have a sum of 10? Malia. Five plus five. Those equal 10. And let's see, six plus four. Okay, Owen? Zero. Seven plus three. All right, um, Nicholas? One plus nine. Um, and Angelica? Eight plus two. Okay, so those are some. There's more, but we'll go with those first. Um, suppose you want to write 10 as a sum of three add-ins. What is one that you can do, Daniel? Um, Brian. Six plus three plus one. Okay. Taurus. Five plus three plus two. There's a, going to be a lot of options for this one. Let's do one more, Christine. Eight plus one plus one. Okay. If you want to write ten as a sum of add-ins, Using only ones, how would you write that? What would that look like? Haley. One plus 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 one Go ahead and open your book to 7-2. Emilio cut a sandwich into eight equal pieces and ate one piece. He has seven eighths of the sandwich left. Emilio put each remaining piece in a, on a snack plate. How many snack plates did he use? What part of the sandwich did he put in each plate? <coughs> this is kind of similar to the last question we just did on the board. Each plate of the sandwich has one eighth. Remember, he puts, he eats one, and then he puts the rest of the sandwich, here's your sandwich right here, he puts the rest of the sandwich into separate plates, one piece on each, on each plate. So again, each plate of, the, each piece of the sandwich is one eighth of the whole. Here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He ate one, and the rest of the pieces are one eighth. One eighth is called a unit fraction in this case because it tells the part of the whole that one piece represents, which is why I had you do on the board that last one. If you wanted to use only ones, what would it look like? So unit fraction is one piece of the fraction. What does it look like? Or what is, how is it represented? A unit fraction always has a numerator of one. What is the numerator of a unit fraction? One. Is it always? No. Yes. A unit fraction always has a numerator of one. Go ahead and underline that in your book. We're going to write a seven eighths as a sum of unit fractions. Now this is the same thing that's shown here, only it's shown in a model compared to the whole. And you guys haven't seen this that much because go um, because our math program last year didn't always represent them compared to a whole. If you've been doing Go Math for the last three or four years, you this would look totally normal to you. But here's the whole. Here are the fractions that are left. And this is where the representation of the fraction that's missing is, the piece that he ate. Raise your hand if you're having a hard time under, understanding how that works. Okay, so look at this again here. See how this is the whole sandwich before they cut the sandwich. So before they cut the sandwich, it would be represented like this. There's the whole sandwich. Okay? Then they cut the sandwich and Emilio ate a piece. So now this is what's left. All these pieces that are one eighth of a size and then a missing piece. Does that make, does that help? Okay. So if we took those seven eighths left, that are left and represented them as unit fractions, what would be my numerator on this first one? Raise your hand if you can tell me. 
What should be the numerator? R look back at what we underlined up here. What should my numerator be, class? One. One. And what is my denominator? Eight. Because the, fra the part that we're working with are eighths. Okay? So seven eighths is going to equal one eighth plus what? One eighth plus one eighth plus plus two eighths? No. No. One eighth plus, I'm just making sure you're awake, plus one eighth. Now, working backwards, if I went ahead and added all these together, I would add all my parts, my numerators. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it equals seven eighths. Okay? So the number of add-ins represents the number of plates used. So remember, we put one piece, one of the eighths on each plate. How many people could this feed? Besides Emilio, who already had his piece. Seven how, people. How many? Each one of these represents an eight. It represents a plate. So how many people get to eat lunch now? Six. Six? Seven. 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 Right. So Emilio used how many plates? Seven. Seven, because he didn't use one for himself. He just ate it. And then he put the rest on their own individual plate. He put how much of a sandwich on each plate? One. one eighth. Not just one, but one eighth. So he used seven plates, and he put one eighth of a sandwich on each plate. Go ahead and fill. This is a good question. Why don't we add the numerator when we do this? I mean, why don't we add the denominator? And if we did one eighth plus one eighth, it would equal, we add the numerators, right? Two. Six and it would be 2 sixteenths. Now we remember how to put in simplest form fractions. They're both even numbers, so I can divide by what number? One, two. two. This would equal one, and this would equal eight. eight. So ultimately what I would be saying if I did this, and I, made, and I added those two to be sixteenths, I would be saying that one eighth plus one eighth equals one eighth. Oh. And that doesn't work, does it? Remember that the denominator represents the size of the piece. If I add the denominator, I'm adding, I'm, it's like trying to add um, apples and bananas, basically. It's trying to say an apple plus an apple equals a banana, is what it's like trying to say. Because you're talking about totally different size, size of the parts that you're working with. So 2 sixteenths means that it would look like this. Now, all these are, and now we've changed the size of the piece of the sandwich, and we can't do that. What if Emilio ate three of the pieces of the sandwich instead of one piece? So now here's his sandwich, and he also ate these. How many snack plates would he need, and what part of the sandwich would be on each plate? Go ahead and do that on your own. So he would need five, and each part would be how much, Lydia? Very good. Would be one eighth. Okay. So that's really because it would look like this: one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth plus. One eighth plus one eighth, and there should be five of them. This was the end of a sentence over here. Okay, which equaled five eighths, which was how much was left over. Kevin and Olivia are going to share a whole pizza. The pizza is cut into six equal slices. They will put the slices on two separate dishes. What part of the whole pizza could be on each dish? So think of a whole pizza right here. And it doesn't say they share them equally, does it? No. It doesn't say that they share them equally. So we're going to come up with three different ways that they can share the pizza. Can we have one empty plate? Can we have one person who has six pieces and one person who has none? No. Because that would not fall under the definition of sharing, would it? Um, we are sharing, but we did not are not necessarily sharing equally. So let's talk about the different ways we can share this pizza. 
What is one way we can share this pizza? Avani. So we can share it evenly, right? And we can do one, two, three for that person. And I'm going to put it here, even though visually it's easier to see it over there. But it doesn't matter which side you put it on because it doesn't. <laughs> so this is represented by what fraction? Three, six. Oh, really? Three, six. And Shane, what re fraction is this represented? Three, six. Three, six also. Okay. So they can share each of those equally. What is another way to write 3 6? Ronnie. One half, right? We can also call this one half. If we look at the pizza, we can see that it's one half. Visually, we can see that it's one half. Okay? I would like for you right now to copy this and do two more ways they can share the pizza. It does not have to be, it, we've already done the equally sharing. Now we have one who's more hungry than the other. So show two different ways that they can share it on your paper. Go ahead. Okay, Malia is going to show us one way that she did um, hers. Do I fill it in too? Yep. Okay. So tell us as you're doing it. Uh, I did two six. Whoops. And four six. It's hard to write with those fat pens, huh? <laughs> there you go. So she did, thank you. So she did two six here and four six here. One of the things that I saw some of you doing is you, as, as you were putting the two here, you kind of covered, okay, how many are left? Four six, that's one way to do it. Or you can do where you take the six, six like this. And you say, okay, I'm going to minus 2, 6 for that, and that's going to give me 4, 6 left for this one. That's another way to do it. What is um, 2, 6 in simplest form? Raise a hand if you can tell me in simplest form. I like that I see all these hands. Antonia, what, do you, what is 2, 6 in simplest form? No. Nope. That's, an, that's an equivalent fraction, though. He said 4 twelfths, and I'm going to put that here. It is an equivalent fraction, but we want simplest form. What is the simplest form? Preston. One third. We divided by two. What is four six in simplest form? Funny. Two thirds. Correct. And if you take your pizza, you can see that. I'm, I've divided that into thirds. You can see that this is one third. And if I do the same thing here. I can see that that's all, that's two-thirds right there. All right, the last one, I'm going to erase all this so I can leave room for, um, Nicholas is going to do our next one. Nicholas? I did um, one-six, and then five-six. Do you want to use your little finger to erase that one right here? Close enough, right? Will you write your fractions here? One six and five six. Very good. Thank you. Is there any way to simplify one six and five six? Raise your hand when you can give me an answer. Is there a way to simplify these two fractions? Either one of them. What do you think, Jalen? No. No, why not? There's, right, they do not have a common factor. In this case, we're already at one. We can't go any reduced from one, can we? Any simpler than one. And in this case, we have five, six. There's no number that, bo that goes into both five and six. All right. If there were eight dishes, could you put one six of the whole pizza on each dish? No. Think about it, and then when you can tell me why that doesn't work in words, raise your hand. The question's right here. If there were eight dishes, could you put one-sixth of the whole pizza on each dish? So there would be leftover plates. How many leftover plates would there be? 
two left over. Very good. There would end up being two leftover plates. Very good. All right. What if three friends shared this pizza right here? And three friends are going to share it. And they put the pizza slices on three separate dishes. What part of the pizza could be on each dish? Write equations. So you're not going to draw pictures this time. You're just going to write equations. If I was writing an equation for this, this green one up here, it would look like this. 1, 6 plus 5, 6 equals 6, 6. Go ahead and do two different examples of how three friends could share the pizza. It does not have to be equally, but it can be equally. Okay. Okay, so tell us what you did. I did 3, 6 plus 2, 6 plus 1, 6 equals 6, 6. Okay, so you have 3 plus 2 plus 1 equals 6. So here you have the three, three pieces plus two pieces plus one piece equals six pieces. Yeah, I like Do you see it again? All right. I did two six plus two six plus two six equals six six. Okay, these friends shared equally, right? They're equivalent. The fractions equal each other. Can we reduce these fractions sim yes. to simplest form? Give me a yes or a no. Okay, who can tell me what is the simplest form? One third. Go ahead and write that right down here. One third. Because each one of those fractions actually equals one third. And it looks like I realized. Wait a minute. I was gonna write a six. Okay, so if you look up at this one, it's like doing the one third plus the one third plus the one third. So you can see it there. All right. Thank you. Write three fourths as a sum of unit fractions. A unit fraction means what is the numerator? One. One is the numerator. So I have three fourths. I'm going to write that as fractions. Okay, what fraction am I going to write right here? One fourth. What am I going to write next? One fourth. And then plus? One fourth. Okay, they're all considered unit fractions. Who can explain to me why, how we know these are unit fractions? The numerator for all of them are, one, are is a 1. Okay? So number 2, write the fraction as the sum of the unit fractions. Are we going to use this one right here? No. No, because it's showing it why it's not shaded. Don't use that one. Go ahead and write this as a sum of its unit fractions on your paper. All right, help me out. What is my first one going to say? 1, 6. 1, 6. 1, 6. What am I going to write next? One, Plus is what I'm going to write. Because when I was walking around and looking at some of your papers, you were just putting commas in between. That's not what the direction is. It's write it as a sum of unit fractions. Okay, so the next one is what I'm going to write next. One, six. And then I'm going to write a. Plus. And then. One, six. Plus. One, six. Plus. One, six. Equals. Oh, equals. Five, six. It's already over there. So make sure you only do five of them. There's one, two, three, four, five. The numerator here was five, so we can't do any more than that. All right, write this one as a sum of unit fractions. Two thirds equals one third. One third. One third. No equals. We already have the equals. Two thirds equals. We don't write it again. It's redundant. 